Welcome to the Counter Vortex, your weekly roundup of underreported news and views from around the world. With an unapologetically radical, dissident left perspective, brought to you by your chief reporter, ranter, and blogger, Bill Weinberg. That would be me. In the nine weeks since Israel began bombarding and laying total siege to Gaza, around 85% of the 2.3 million people who live in the Strip have been displaced from their homes, according to the UN. More than 20,000 people have been killed, around 70% of them women and children, and many others are missing and presumed to be trapped under the rubble of destroyed buildings, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. The enclave's health care system is barely functional, and families are going entire days without food. The Israeli ground invasion is expanding into southern Gaza, forcing hundreds of thousands of the displaced into ever smaller areas. Relief efforts have essentially ground to a halt, and UN officials have repeatedly warned that nowhere is safe. The UN's Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA, warns that civil order is approaching collapse, stating, We are reaching the point of no return. Quote unquote. Regional NGO Alliance, the People's Coalition for the Sahel, is demanding the immediate return alive of human rights defender Dauda Diallo, Secretary General of Burkina Faso's Collective Against Impunity and Stigmatization of Communities, CISC. The CISC announced that Diallo was abducted on a Ouagadougou street by at least four unidentified men in civilian clothes. Diallo's CISC has been raising the alarm about ethnically targeted killings in Burkina Faso under the military regimes that have been in power since a January 22 coup, with members of the Fulani people especially stigmatized. It is believed that Diallo may have been requisitioned by the armed forces to participate in the very counterinsurgency campaign that his group has been protesting. The Nigerian military says it is investigating an army drone attack at a religious gathering on a village in northwest Kaduna state that killed 85 civilians and wounded more than 60 others. Residents of Tudun Biri village were holding festivities for the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad, Eid a Malid an Nabi, when the drone struck. Since 2017, hundreds of civilians have been killed in airstrikes carried out by the Nigerian military, ostensibly targeting armed rebel and bandit groups, according to monitors. A district court in Kazan, capital of the Russian Republic of Tatarstan, extended the detention of Alsu Kurmasheva, a journalist holding joint Russian and United States citizenship. Kurmasheva, who reports for the Tartar language service of the U.S.-funded Radio Free Europe, was first detained in October. She faces charges of failure to register as a foreign agent, an offense that carries a penalty of up to five years in prison. The decision extending her pretrial detention through early February was made without actually setting a trial date. Hong Kong Chief Executive Ka Chiu Li applauded the good turnout in the city's Patriots-only district council elections, despite a turnout of only 27.5%, the lowest in any race since the return to Chinese rule in 1997. He also charged that protesters had attempted to sabotage the vote. Four of the city's leading democracy advocates were preemptively arrested for supposedly planning protests before the polls opened, including 
Sean Paul Ying of the League of Social Democrats, pictured above in a shot from Hong Kong Free Press. This was the first district-level vote since Hong Kong's government overhauled the electoral system, instating changes that effectively made it impossible for pro-democracy candidates to run. Most of the city's pro-democracy activists are now behind bars, in exile, or silenced by fear of repression. Global crisis was already at a horrific level due to Russia's war and campaign of genocide in Ukraine, when 2023 began, since this October, even Ukraine has been pushed from the headlines by Israel's unrelenting and massive bombardment of Gaza, now also approaching the level of genocide. And then there are the numerous conflicts around the world that get virtually no coverage. At the counter-vortex, we strive every day to bring an unorthodox, dissident left perspective to the conflicts that are in the headlines, demonstrating, for example, why progressives should support Ukraine and Palestine in repudiation of the great power game that divides the world into rival camps, while also providing consistent coverage of underreported conflicts outside the media spotlight. We can only continue this mission with your continued support. Please give what you can. In episode 204 of the Counter Vortex podcast, Bill Weinberg, that would be me, returns to the persistent controversy around the slogan, From the River to the sea, portrayed as either a call to genocide or a cry for liberation. Much mainstream media coverage has dishonestly accepted the prior interpretation as a fait accompli. On the other hand, displays of unseemly enthusiasm for the Hamas attacks by certain sectors of the Palestine Solidarity Movement have provided propaganda fodder for Israel and its stateside pressure groups. This is, at least, a tactical error that abets moves toward campus censorship of pro-Palestinian voices. You can listen at Patreon, patreon.com slash countervortex. And while you're there, please subscribe. Also check out our sibling website, New Jewish Resistance, for a proudly Jewish anti-Zionist perspective on Gaza and the question of Palestine generally. NewJewishResistance.org, fighting Zionism and anti-Semitism, defending pan-Semitic unity. And do follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. And please join us next week for the Counter Vortex.